Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Dave Sharp. Welcome to the Legendary Marketer Podcast. And, uh, you know, I'm excited about this podcast, and I'm going to tell you why uh, this is so different than anything that maybe you've ever listened to before. And I'm going to jump right into it. Hopefully you don't mind. Uh, I'm going to skip all the fluff. What you're going to find about this podcast uh, is that it's definitely all killer and no filler. And there's some things that I want to take this first episode to really cover um, that are going to make the rest of the episodes really make sense. Okay. I'm, I'm a guy and over the course of the, the, the time of you listening to me, you're going to, you're going to hear a lot of wild stories. First and foremost, you're going to hear a lot of weird twist. And the first weird twist that I'm going to tell you about that happened in my life, um, and that was sort of the birth of all of this, all, all everything, everything, uh, in my life that's happened, both good and bad, uh, was when I left home, my story really starts at, at about the age of 14. I left home, I became a teenage father, uh, I was on the streets, and by 18, um, I had my little hustles, I had my little entrepreneurial uh, endeavors, but of course, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't ringing the cash register, uh, working at Kmart or 7-Eleven, um, I was on the streets hustling, and uh, I became an addict. And over the course of the next seven or, or six or seven years, uh, I, 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 I basically was brought to my knees um, and became a heroin addict. So at this point, uh, by the age of 24, I'm a high school dropout. I'm a teenage father. I'm homeless. Okay, can't, can't forget that. I'm homeless. So I've got nowhere to actually live. I've got nothing established in life. I've got no car. Um, I've got nothing literally but the change in my pocket in the bag of clothes that I threw over my shoulder. And I found myself in a bathroom in St. Pete, Florida, which is where I live. Uh, and I still live in that city to this day. We're here now recording this podcast. And I was, you know, down to my last hit. And, and I know this is graphical and I know I'm jumping right into things, but I was down to my last hit. And I spilled it all over the toilet seat. And, uh, you know, in that moment, most people would say, well, I mean, that's, that's done. We're going to move on with life. But not me. I was so low. I was so desperate. I was so broken. I wasn't just broke. I was broken. Um, I began to try to clean it up off the toilet seat. And I realized at that moment, that was a defining moment for me, uh, that this was not my destiny. And so I stood up and I looked in, in the mirror, which the mirror I'll never forget was this kind of cloudy mirror, dirty mirror. It's a laundry mat. It was, a, it was a dirty, cloudy mirror, and I didn't hardly recognize myself, and I looked at myself and, and felt some emotion, felt some desperation, felt some pain, felt some anger, felt some depression, and said that something's got to change. And, and the thing that had to change was everything. I just didn't know that yet, um, but I walked to my dad's house. I knocked on his door, and I essentially, I don't remember exactly what I said, but I essentially asked him to help me save my life. And thus began the journey of me getting on my feet for really the first time in my entire life. And so for the next couple of months, I, I went to work, because I wasn't going to lay around on his freaking couch. So I, I went to work with him, and, and he wasn't going to let me. I was just joking about one thing that he used to say to me when we used to show up on job sites. I would stand there and not know what the hell I was doing. And I would come and I would, I would, I would walk around, act like I did know what I was doing. And he'd say, son, do something, even if it's wrong. And so he took me and he paid me out of his paycheck. He didn't, he wasn't looking to hire somebody. He paid me out of his paycheck. He let me sleep on his couch until I saved up enough money to buy one of those. I think it's called a twin bed. I don't know why it's called a twin bed unless you've got really tiny people, really tiny twins that are sleeping on together because there ain't no room for two people. Now, there was barely room for me. My legs were hanging off. I'm 6'2", so I'm tall. And we slept in the same room together. My dad and I, he's a blue-collar guy from Alabama, grew up on construction sites, grew up as a plumber, um, became a, a, a craftsman, and he's really talented, really smart guy. And so... That was my journey. I, I eventually bought an old 1990 Ford F-150. Um, this, this truck that I drove around in these beginning stages of me be getting back on my feet, uh, was, was, it, it, was, it was literally a rust bucket. At times I looked at it and actually thought there was more rust than paint on this truck. 
and I would drive around and paint chips would fly off of it, the, 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 the paint chips that were remaining on the truck. And I used to have to start it with a solenoid or with a screwdriver and a solenoid. Now, I'm not a mechanic, but I did learn what a solenoid was because somebody showed me how to start the truck with a screwdriver and sparks would fly and it would be uh, quite a scene. So I would always usually be the last person to leave anywhere that I went. And, uh, and so I drove that around and slowly got back on my feet. And with every swing of the hammer, now I live in Florida, so it's hotter than hell okay, down here. Now, I've never been to hell, and hopefully I'm not going to hell uh, because I've ch I'm a changed man. But uh, it was hot, and with every swing of the hammer, I used to, 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 to literally say to myself, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way to earn a living. There's got to be a better way to provide for myself, provide for my future family. Now, I was in that situation. I was in a situation of not having... Um, you know, of, of being on a construction site, working construction, having no money in the bank account, living paycheck to paycheck. But, and, and I thought that I had it bad. I thought that I had it bad back then. Um, little did I know that I actually had it good. And one of the reasons why I had it good was because a lot of my friends who I went to school with, they graduated. They were good little boys and girls. They followed the the blueprint, the game plan that whoever the hell made this game plan up, I don't know, but they followed it like good little boys and girls. And they, you know, scored high on their SATs and they graduated high school and they put in all their applications and, and they got, you know, accepted to college. And, and at 18 years old, a lot of my buddies at 18 years old, before the frontal cortex, the part of your brain that is that makes executive decisions, okay? If you know anything about uh, uh, neuroscience, we know that the brain's not even freaking fully developed until 25, at least in a man anyways. That's why men, us boys, we act like boys until we're, well, I guess, I guess we don't start acting like men at 25, most of us anyways. But the brain is not even capable at 18 years old to be able to make executive decisions about taking out 30, 40, 50, 80 thousand dollars in debt, which was what most people, most of my buddies anyways, that's what they were doing. And so many of them did. They at 18 years old went ahead and, and, and it was it's a big thing. If you think about it, I just I just published my first book, Legendary Marketer. This book talks about how to build a digital marketing business and earn unlimited income from anywhere in the world. Okay? Hopefully you'll go and pick up a copy because it's powerful. And inside of this book is the blueprint that I've used to do what I'm about to tell you that I've done over the course of the last seven or eight years with no high school education, being a dropout, being homeless, being addicted, being somebody who had no qualifications. This book maps out everything. But inside of this book, I talk about right in the first chapter. This book is the same thing as this podcast. I jump right in to the, 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 the meat and potatoes, um, I talk about uh, the fact that, um, you know, school is, student loan debt is one of the only, I believe it's the only debt that is not forgiven by the government. So you can't file bankruptcy on student loan debt. You can file bankruptcy on credit card debt. You can file bankruptcy on all this other stuff over here, but student loan debt is the one type of debt that you cannot file bankruptcy on. And so, to me, the system that is essentially is promising us a future is the same system that is essentially setting a lot. Now, I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of us, a lot of our children, a lot of our you know, youth setting us up for to basically to be in debt for the rest of our lives. And we're making that decision, a lot of my buddies were anyways, making that decision before our brains were even fully developed. Let me tell you something. I wasn't able to make real smart financial decisions in my life. Some days I'm still not. Some days I still struggle. Some days I still have to consult with people and ask questions. And What the hell do you think about this? You know, I don't know. So it takes a long time, and that's a big decision. That's a huge decision, 40, 50, 60, 80,000 dollars, sometimes more in debt uh, to, or loans to be able to go to college. So anyways, I thought I had it bad. I realized that essentially I, I really didn't. I may have missed a few years because I got clean at 24 and all of this construction started happening 24, 25. But 
Eventually, again, like I said, I was hunting for more, searching for more. You ever been so in a job or something, and you just you're, you're like a, you're like on the on the prowl all the time, looking for an opportunity, right? You, you you go to a job, and like every day, you're actually not working, and you're looking in the classifieds for like other opportunities. Well, that's how I was, but I wasn't particularly looking for another job. So what I would do every night was was I would go home and I would mess around on the computer. Now, back in the day, I was messing around on my dad's computer. This was an old piece of crap. This was back in the days of MySpace. So it wasn't that long ago, but it wasn't last year. And this computer, let me tell you something. I don't know if it was too much porn on the damn thing. I don't know. But this computer ran so slow. But what this computer did allow me to do was, was get a little taste, get a little insight into the power of what I now know is a digital revolution. A lot of times we're focused as a society on what's on TV, what's on CNN, what's on the news, all these distractions. But over here, people like Bill Gates, people like Jeff Bezos, people like um, uh, you know Steve Jobs, and those are just some of the big names. There's, a, there's thousands of others that you and I we don't know because they're in Silicon Valley, they're over in Thailand, they're in Greenland, they're in the UK. They're sitting behind their computers on a laptop with a decent Wi-Fi connection, literally creating income out of thin air because of the internet, because of laptops, because of cell phones, right? And so, so I started to get a taste of the internet because I was hungry I got involved in some 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 things at first that were not really uh, uh, legit, right? We all start out in, in you know usually doing something, right? We're so desperate and hungry, and I started out in a couple of different schemes and scams, and I was in the cell phone. I think it was a network MLM or something, uh, and and and. You know, it 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 uh, I ordered my cell phone, and the damn company shut down in three months, right? Uh, but what was interesting about that company, anyways, was that before it did shut down, I earned two dollars in commissions. And what was interesting about that was it showed me when I got because there was an old saying that I heard a lady say one time that it's not real unless you can hold it in your hands. And a lot of times, people underestimate or overlook what's happening online because they don't think that it's real, because you can't hold it in your hands. But that first time that I got that check, I realized that this is real. And it, it, my, the hunger inside of me grew even more. And so I kept trying. Eventually, I, my now wife, I, 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 I begged uh, her to, to let me use her credit card. Because remember, I didn't have any, I didn't have any uh, uh, credit. So I couldn't go get credit cards. I couldn't get business loans at, those time, at that time. Um, so I, I borrowed my, my wife's credit card. I went to Best Buy, about a $500 computer, and, uh, and, and I went and I started to try to figure out online marketing, and I failed miserably. At first, I would try to do videos and try to be everybody but myself and comb my hair just right and all this crap, and I realized that that wasn't, uh, gonna, that wasn't getting me anywhere. And eventually I learned how to take my mess and turn it into a message. I learned how to tell my story. I learned how to write emails. I learned copywriting. I learned about sales funnels. I learned how to create products. I learned about phone sales. I learned about all these things. I learned how to attract people and become the hunted uh, rather than the hunter, right? Most people in business, even if even most people who are self-employed, they're chasing people around. They're handing business cards. They're going to networking meetings and nobody's calling them back. I learned marketing. I learned mar the art of, of, of attracting, it's seducing customers, creating offers that were irresistible that just people could, could, could not say no to. And before you know it, I made my first sale. I made my first $1,000. I made my first $10,000. And then I was ready to scale. But again, I didn't have any money. I didn't have any ability to go and get credit. So I went to good old mom, went to my good old mom, God bless her. And I said, mom, I need a loan. I need $10,000. And she said, son, <laughs> you better not fuck this up. And she gave me the $10,000. And I went and over the course of two years in a company that I co-founded in 2011, I took that $10,000 and I turned it in to nearly $175 million in sales. Now we're talking about a kid who 
had no credentials, had no letters behind his name, had no um, previous experience really, did not know how to run a company. And, and, and over the course of these episodes, I'm going to tell you about some of these mistakes. I'm going to take you behind the scenes of how I've built companies and how I've scaled teams and how I've uh, you know influenced thousands of people to you know to 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 take action, right? Created amazing cultures, but I've definitely learned a lot of it as I as I've gone, because again, I didn't go to school. And let me tell you something: they don't. There is no school that teaches this shit, anyways. The stuff that I'm going to talk to you about, the stuff that I'm going to teach you about, the stuff that I'm going to share with you based on my own experience, there ain't a freaking school on this earth that will teach you and talk to you about the challenges, the, the, the hustle, right? The late nights, the early mornings, the, the, the tricks, the hacks, the, all of the little strategies that you can use to build the business of your dreams and do it with nothing but a laptop, a cell phone, and a shitty Wi-Fi connection. You don't even need a good one, right? And so what I'm going to do that's so different on this podcast is I'm going to bring on people. There's, I, there's a million podcasts that are out there in the podcast e- ethos, right, uh, floating around on iTunes and all this other stuff. And they, 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 they either just you know talk about philosophy all day or, or just talk about nothing or they bring on other gurus. I'm going to, there's so many people out there who are offering information and knowledge and, and, and nowadays knowledge, it's one of the reasons why I'm in the digital publishing business, which means that I sell, um, my product is information. It is books, it is courses, it is seminars, it is events. And we have programs done for you, marketing programs that people also use to help them get started with their own digital marketing business. But nowadays, there's so much information that information is a, is a freaking commodity. You know, information is a commodity. You can get it for free on Google. You can get it for free on YouTube. Everybody's, you know, content. I was just talking about this with my videographer. Content is, 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 is it's everywhere, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring on this podcast, not only some of my marketing friends and people who you'll get value from, from their experience, but also real people who I've actually helped build digital businesses. I've helped over the course of the last six or seven years, over 12 people earn over a million dollars, right? It's pretty cool. I've helped hundreds, hundreds of people earn six figures and multiple six figures and thousands of people, thousands upon thousands out of the 300,000 students that I've been blessed to be able to serve all over the world, right? dream come freaking true. You're talking about a ninth grade dropout, teenage father, that all the the the, the judges, the, the, the probation officers, the counselors, the teachers, the ex-girlfriends, I made them eat their fucking heart out, right? Why? Well, because today, today, because I followed my passion, because I everybody else was running one way and I turned to my the dude I was running next to and I said, why the fuck are we running this way? And he said, I don't know. And I said, okay, I'm going to stop running that way. And instead of running with the masses, I started running with the classes, right? I started getting hooked up with people who were doing something big, who were doing shit with their life, right? I got around mentors. I started to soak up knowledge. But anyways, over the, 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 out of the 300,000 paid students that's gone through my courses, read my books, and gone to my, my events and seminars, you know, I've been blessed. And, and I'm humbled, to say that I've helped tons of them quit their jobs, earn their first dollar, and reclaim their God-given right to wake up whenever the hell they want to. So over the course of these coming episodes, I'm going to bring on some of those people, and I'm going to give you a chance to listen to their stories, to listen to how they did it, because sometimes that's what you need if that's what you want to do. You need to be able to listen to somebody who is not a billion dollars in sales down the road. Maybe they're just $1,000 into their first business. Maybe they're just 10000 Maybe they just made their first dollar, right? Somebody who's fresh, who's you know was just working a job. I think of all the the stories of the people over the years that have you know gone from printing press guys to people who work construction like me to some people who are corporate executives. Most people don't have stories like me. You have your own story, right? And this is not just about making money. It's about much more than that. For me, it was about 
learning how to take my mess and turn it into a million dollar message, man. It was about learning how to take all of the struggles in my life that were going to keep me down, that, that everybody said, this is why you'll never succeed, and turn those struggles into my strengths, right? So for me, that's what the blessing has been of marketing, of entrepreneurship, of going from loser to, in some eyes, and anyways, I have a, a philosophy of a front row policy for my children that I don't care about anything except when I die, I want my children to be in the front row of my funeral. And I got that beautiful, brilliant, eloquent idea from a buddy of mine named Andy. And so for me, this has given me a purpose. And for you, I don't know why you might want to start your own digital marketing business or why you might be curious about what else is out there. But if you are curious, you're smart because statistics show that, uh, you know, most people in America don't have a thousand dollars in their bank account. Statistics and research shows that a lot, the majority of people getting ready to retire have three to $12,000 to their name. So how do you change that? Well, you start now. When's the best time to plant a tree? Yesterday. When's the second best time? Today. So this podcast can be a seed planting practice for you because I'm going to give you seeds to plant. Some will grow, some won't. Some of these ideas you'll take and run. And along the way, we'll give you tools like, for example, this book. We'll give you tools that you can use that will be maps and blueprints, and, 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 and you can use that in combination with the experience that I'm going to give you, and I'm going to lay it all out on the table for you as well as the guests that I'm going to have on this podcast that will give you their experience. So here's what I'm going to encourage you to do is to lean in, to tune in, to listen in. Put your freaking seatbelt on because life will never be the same. See ya.